Well, good evening. Uh, I'm waiting for the uh, uh, inverter for the CCFL uh, bulb to come in for the 16902B. Uh, so I got it off the, the bench because uh, I just received this uh, item here. And this is a uh, Dolch Pack 65. So what is uh, Dolch Pack 65? Well, it is what we used to back in the early 90s call a sewing machine sized uh, portable. It basically is roughly the size of a, a sewing machine. If you remember back, I don't even know if they sell them, but they used to, back when I was a boy, my mum had uh, you know, a sewing machine like this and the cover came off and all that. But that was basically what we called this. And so this is a, a full PC and it's from the, uh, uh, I think the mid to late uh, 90s. Uh, but basically what I wanted to do was to get a machine to replace the desktop uh, that I'd been using. Now, uh, what I've got is so I wanted to get something that would run uh, some of these DOS, uh, old DOS programs that I have that talk to some of my HP test gear. And I also wanted to buy a, I've been looking for, and I finally won, uh, a auction for a, uh, uh, a measurement coprocessor, which is basically a... Uh, Motorola 68k based piece uh, computer on a separate card that is like the series 200 300 HP UX machines but it goes into a PC and it leverages the PC as a backplane to do things like disk and IO and uh, display and so on so that card is on its way and I want to put it in here and basically I want to make this a smaller machine so that I can actually get access I can keep it in the the storage cup and are under the bench and I can just pull it out, drop it on the bench and I still have some bench space uh, around. So the unit just arrived, so let's just take a, a quick look at it. Uh, here you can see the, the box. Now these things were originally a network sniffer and so if we look here on the, the side, let me see if I can get some light in here, we can see that there is uh, a couple of different cards, that's an external uh, video port, that's the, a network card. This is going to be, take a look at this, this is a uh, going to be a fiber optic uh, networking card and then at the top here is going to be uh, the other network analysis card now I think this um, little one here is uh, an AUI I think it is uh, connector uh, I don't know what this is but basically um, you had these external transceivers they were very very uh, popular in uh, uh, Ungerman bass type networks but basically it was a external transceiver that the network cabling would plug into and they plugged into this type of port here. Uh, so these things were designed to enable a network technician to plug these into the network and then look at the packets that were going back and forwards across the network to identify problems and uh, find performance bottlenecks and, and so on. But fundamentally on the inside, they're just a little PC. And we're going to do a teardown because I need to replace uh, a few components in it. So here over the side here, we have uh, a slimline floppy drive and a uh, CD. Okay, so let's uh, open up the front here and you can have a look in and we can see what's in the, the front of the machine. Now, these things have been fairly highly prized by people uh, and I apologize for the uh, uh, audio, but um, uh, my actual main machine died this morning. So uh, uh, it's some hardware failure, I think, in the motherboard and uh, I need to get that replaced. So I can't use my... Uh, uh, you know, uh, proper microphone. Anyway, we're just going with the microphones on the uh, uh, video cameras. But these have been highly prized by people because of the quality of the keyboard. And I have to tell you, the keyboard feels fantastic. It's not quite as good as the original IBM uh, keyboards, but um, it is very, very good uh, on it. And so you see a lot of these where they've come in and they've basically taken the keyboard off the unit and people have repurposed these keyboards into... Uh, keyboards for PCs and so on. But here's our keyboard. We have an LCD screen in here. Um, let me just put this back in because what I want to do is go in and we'll tilt it up a little bit so that I can actually see what's going on uh, with this. And on the bottom, I don't know if you can see here, but uh, these little legs have uh, started to come off and there's a little nut in here. So I have to get inside to be able to uh, uh, repair those. Anyway, let's take this uh, keyboard off. 
we will step up the leg so we can see what's going on. Let me angle that a bit so it's better there. We'll move that out of the road and let me plug in a, uh, a cable, a power cable. Which way does that go? It goes this way. Okay, and now here we'll turn it on. Now I know this boots because the uh, uh, it came in, uh, it was on auction as a working machine. Let me turn this off and see if that makes it easier for the camera to see it, to see the screen. But you can see that uh, it's booting. Um, we have a checksum error which I saw in the floppy disk file. Checksum error is probably because the little um, uh, battery on the motherboard has died. So we will... Uh, have to replace that. The floppy disk, I'm led to believe that a lot of the time the floppy disk failures occur here because um, they have, uh, they, they, when you lose um, uh, when you lose the uh, the system BIOS settings it loses uh, what the, uh, the drive uh, definition is. So let's go in and see if we can, well uh, that seems to be right because it is a what do we have here? 2.88, five and a quarter inch. All right, so let's go and we'll quit this and we'll go in, we'll exit and save, and we'll see if that reboot uh, fixes the issue. And if it does, then that's great. Otherwise, I bought a replacement uh, drive to be able to put in there. Uh, the seller on eBay showed this boot screen, so this was all pretty expected nope still failing we're not getting the, uh, the BIOS defaults anymore so anyway let's just pass that and see what happens uh, it's Friday evening here the drink of choice is uh, a Woodenville whiskey uh, age your own uh, uh, whiskey basically they will sell you a little wooden keg and some uh, what they call white dog whiskey which is uh, their distilled but unaged uh, whiskey base and then you can age it yourself for as long as you like I've got this going on for about two and a half months and it's uh, uh, very nice it ages 53 times faster in this little keg than it does in the real world anyway let's um, let me plug in a network cable and we'll see if anything actually oh. well it's starting when it's only timed out there's a little uh, brightness control here, but it doesn't really have a lot of range. I expect maybe the bulb has started to wear out. I know that Curious Mark did a, um, a teardown of the, this machine and um, uh, had a similar problem with a, a, a very dim display. So I'm gonna have to go watch that uh, video to see what's going on. This is arguably the world's worst backdrop for a, uh, a desktop. Shame, but as you can see, it's up and running. So let's go in and we'll actually just uh, restart that because I want to see if the actual network cards, uh, if the network sniffing part of the, the system works properly. Oops, I'm just going to continue. the sniffer now I have never ever used uh, one of these so I don't know anything about the uh, uh, about what uh, goes on in, in here and how to use them and what it should tell you uh, so I can add, add very little value here uh, except to say that you know the Ethernet analyzer is going to look at uh, you know the Ethernet cable that we've put in here that's the fiber optic I have uh, that's the internet network analyzer which is the, uh, that card that I showed you at the top of the ARU uh, adapter. Um, Ethernet again, FDI. Uh, the LM2, oh, oh, there you go. So, saying the LM2000 network card, and then if we come down here, uh, it gives that card, it can look at uh, SNA, which is uh, System Network Architecture, that's an IBM mainframe thing. X25 was a packet switching network. Uh, you know, Frame Relay was, uh, is a, you know, it was an online, uh, uh, way of sending network data so uh, you know interesting 
your support there. Uh, trace that to remote, blah blah blah. All right. So let's just go and run the uh, Ethernet analyzer, and we'll see what uh, what happens there. Oh, looks like it's uh, running. This is awesome UI. Let's uh, just see if we can pick it up. I have no idea if any of this stuff actually still works. I don't really care because I'm going to rip it all out of the machine anyway. But it's interesting to see if it uh, does do something. Okay, here we go. We're getting frames in. We're detecting stuff. Uh, connections. So we, let's go in and take a look here. Oh, now we're starting to pick up um, and determine which um, devices are on the network that are sending stuff. I don't know if we can look at that. I don't know what that's telling me, but... Um, See if we can get something sitting on my network and doesn't have a. This is one six nine two five four. It's the uh, auto um, initialize address space. So something isn't getting a DHCP or doesn't have a uh, IP address. Uh, all right. Well, that's interesting. We're not seeing any stuff there. I don't know. You know, what we're going anyway. Looks like some of this stuff still works, so let's uh, exit out of this. And then we'll exit. Exit here. And then we can just return to DOS. Do it there. Um, I have a, a floppy drive around here. A floppy disk, here we go. Let's just drop that in that, uh, that drive. See if the no, I'm not even I'm not even hearing the head seek. So anyway, all right. Well, there we go. It looks like the machine is does in fact run. Let's uh, start looking, tearing down, and get inside it and see uh, 